John? John, you're upset. What's the problem? Chicken burgers. Oh, that. You know about it? Of course. Dad told me. The board is cutting off the funds for the free clinic. Not yet, they haven't. Chad, it's not for us to tell Mr. Brady how to spend his money. After all, every big donation comes with little strings attached. Oh, Stanley, you are so wise. Thank you. But if he uses that chicken burger money to build that stupid tower... Stupid John! This is the definitive medical facility, the ultimate luxury. I heard he is importing 12 tons of Italian marble just for the lobby alone. Not if I can help it. John, you're not going to fight him on this, are you? Let me give you that idea. <sighs> Lass die Uhr ruhig laufen, lieber Freund. Ich bin gleich wieder zurück, verstanden? Beeil dich nicht, Harry. Die Uhr ist nicht eingeschaltet. Ich wäre sowieso hergefahren, aber sei versichert, das ist das letzte Mal, Harry. Gut, wenn es dir nicht passt, werde ich in Zukunft meine Geschäfte mit jemand anderem tätigen. Dein Wort in Gottes Ohr. Sie diese Tabletten hier einnehmen. Zwei. Und zwar alle vier Stunden. Regelmäßig, bis sie aufgebraucht sind. Verstehen Sie? Versteht Ihre Großmutter unsere Sprache nicht? Nein. Würden Sie ihr erklären, was ich ihr gesagt habe? Kann ich nicht. Ich spreche nicht Chinesisch. Mrs. Pissarro. Mrs. Pissarro, Entschuldigen bitte. Sie mich. Ja, yeah, just send him over. Infectious hepatitis. Now get him admitted and put him on regional isolation right away. Sarah Ferguson? Sarah Ferguson? What do you mean, who's paying for him? If we don't get him off the street, we'll all be paying for him. You have time to look at this x-ray. Uh, yeah. The leg looks like it's healing pretty well. All right, tell him to come back on Wednesday when you're at the pedic man's kit. Will we still be open Wednesday? Okay. I'll look at him. In a minute. Delicious. My compliments to the chef. Carrie, give the others a break, will you? Oh, you doctors. A room full of people writhing in agony. Doesn't faze you. But let a guy reach into the cookie jar twice. What <laughs> agony are you selling this week? Renal failure. Both kidneys. Respiratory distress. Nausea. Back pain, extreme dizziness. Harry, a person can get very ill reading medical textbooks. <laughs> You'd love it if all the victims were in ignorance, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Look, just huh? do us a favor and take your phony symptoms and go. Well, what's that for? I'm buying back those cookies. Yeah? Well, should be. For another buck. I'll throw in the prune danish. Out. Okay. All right. Have it your way. But next time, you guys will have to beg me to come back to this place. Conchita Gonzalez? Conchita Gonzalez, please. Hey, Harry! Harry, 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 you all right? Yeah, I just gotta get a little rest, that's all. Boy, you had been fooled. That was some performance, you know, a real Academy Award. <laughs> Glad you liked it. Would you get me a cab, please? A taxi cab? Yeah, I gotta get to the hospital. Harry, Harry, you're right in front of the clinic. Hey, Harry, you know you're really something. You're crazy, that's what you are. <laughs> going to have hand-carved, free-form whirlpool spas in every suite. The finest electronic monitoring systems, push-button telephones for every patient, even those in intensive care. I could go on and on about the wonders of the Clarissa May Medical Tower. But I believe you'd rather hear from the little lady whose name's going to ride high on this here project. My mama... 
Theresa May herself. Less of that nonsense. Bobby Joe and I want to thank you all for your support. All I ask is a nice clean shovel for that groundbreaking ceremony on Tuesday. <laughs> and I want you all to be there. Lots of free chicken burgers for everybody. <laughs> Even the folks who voted against the tower. You are going to be there, aren't you, McIntyre? Of course he will. We can't very well inaugurate the new medical tower without our chief of surgery, right, John? I'll make a deal with you, Mr. Brady. Bobby Joe. I'll be there if you'll agree to explain to the patients in our free clinic why it's closing down. It's no secret, sir. The Brady family's been letting you use that old clinic building for years. Now's the time to tear down the whole block. Build something new. A $25 million luxury medical facility. For the rich and the privileged. John, we've uh, been all through this before. Right. Sorry. Enjoy your chicken burgers. Well, it's over. Finished. I close the clinic tomorrow. Maybe. No, they're tearing it down next week. The clinic is through. Don't bet on it. Now, wait a minute. Trust me. Look, I don't know what you got in mind, but I think I'm going to like it. Where'd you learn to use a crowbar? Medical school. Figures. Hey, look at that. Be safe. Be careful. You scared me to death. I'm trying to show you this x-ray machine. How about that? Looks okay to me. If it makes you sterile, I'll be glad to stand in for you. Thanks a lot. How do we move this? Very quietly. <laughs> Morning, Stanley. Morning. Wait a minute. It's one classy jacket. Pure cashmere. I feel I owe it to my patients to not dress like a loser. Morning, Stanley. Keith, what's going on here? Where? Uh, hang on, Jackson. That's hospital equipment. It is? I'll be darned. What are you guys doing with all this stuff? You're stealing it! Aren't you? That's a, you, You're stealing hospital equipment! Well, Jim, I'm not going to stand still for this. Not for one minute. Oh, no. <laughs> Stanley, mm -hmm. are you going to believe what you see or what we tell you? X-ray machine? What do you think you're gonna do? Pawn all this? What is that? What, oh, hi. A viewer, eh? All right, viewer. What's that? I'll just take a little Kleenex stamp. Kleenex, okay. Willard, that medical tower is nothing but one huge monument to Brady's ego. The man is wasting $25 million that could be helping a lot of poor people who cannot afford medical aid. Let him have his little ego trip. In a year or two, we'll broach the need for more funds and reopen the clinic. Then what are those people supposed to be doing all that time, huh? Yes, come in. Hello, Stan. Hello. Gentlemen, I'm here to report a crime. What is it? What's wrong? Not moments ago, in our parking lot, I personally witnessed Dr. Gonzo Gates and Dr. Jackpot Jackson committing a felonious act. Oh, good Lord. Anything interesting? Grand theft. 
Stanley, you realize what you're saying? One Dumont model M14, M14. X-ray machine. Now, come on, Stanley. That old Hulk has been rotting in the basement for the last 12 years. Okay, okay. Six dozen 5cc glass syringes, nine dozen rectal thermometers, five dozen TV syringes. Do you know what this is all about? Well, I know that any one of those items is either old or obsolete. That doesn't make it right. Our own doctors steal it from our own hospital. Stanley, has it occurred to you that they might be borrowing the stuff? On whose authorization? Mine. Trapper, you protecting those two troublemakers? You bet I am. I am protecting them from false, unfounded, slanderous accusations. Stanley, don't you realize what the courts can do to you for defaming the characters of two perfectly respectable physicians? Defaming? Now, actually, John, I wasn't accusing. All I was doing was, uh, reporting. Well, not, that was just sort of a uh, casual, quick impression. Goodbye, Stanley. Right, okay then, I, uh, goodbye. I don't know what this is all about. are you, John? Goodbye, Stanley. Right. I don't know what this is all about, but I don't like it. Anything unpleasant comes of it, I'm holding you responsible. Oh, boy. Let's make it fast. The cookie jar is inside to your left. Uh, what happened to you? I fell off a roof. Ow. What are you, a cop? Sorry, let's see your arm. Come on, Harry, cut it out. Harry. Harry. He's burning up. Get an ambulance fast. Zurück, bitte. Leute, hier gibt's nichts zu gucken. Es kann sich nur noch um Minuten handeln. Keine Müdigkeit vorschützen. Kommt, Leute, kommt. Ihr braucht keine Angst zu haben. Der Arzt wartet schon. The shots of the group here and um, hi. Hi. Then uh, get one of the Titanic, okay? We'll be needing these insulin shots on a regular basis, Mr. Rosen. Can you give them to yourself? Oh, I can't. My hand shakes too much. You better keep coming to the clinic for a while. The clinic's closed. Not this one. That's it, Mr. Rosen. See you tomorrow. You're a fine young man, Dr. Gates. Uh, I wish my son, he could be like you. <laughs> what a son I've got. Fourteen years, not even a lousy postcard. Is the doctor in charge? You next? Uh, Bowling, San Francisco Dispatch. I thought the uh, funds for the free clinic had been cut off. They were. Why? One of our benefactors, uh, Bobby Joe Brady, the chicken burger king, wanted his money put to more dignified use. Brady Medical Tower? Yeah, Brady's folly. Uh, $25 million worth of self-indulgence. Can I quote you on that? Only if you spell my name right. G-A-T-E-S. You and the other intern out there, you from San Francisco Memorial? Yeah, it's our day off. Well, then who's paying for all this? We forgot to ask. <laughs> uh, listen, we've got a lot of people waiting out there, so... Yeah, right. Okay, thanks a lot. Sure. Who's next? I am. Uh, What's your problem, sir? You are, dummy. 
<laughs> By the time he showed up. Yeah, gotcha. I brought some goodies for you. You know, it would have been a lot easier if you had asked for all this stuff. I mean, I, uh, I like your style, kid, but uh, got to work on your timing. They'd have smothered me in red tape, Trapper. Insurance, licenses, permits. Yeah, by the way, what about all that uh, stuff? Uh, licenses, permits, and things like that. I mean, uh... no, never mind. We'll talk about it later. Jackpot! Next patient, please. We'll need your full name, Harry, for the records. Uh-huh. Harry the Hinge. Oh, now, that testifies to my skill at bending over and finding things. Your legal name? Oh, there's been nothing legal about me for years. Okay, uh, how about an address, hmm? Address? Uh, St. Francis Hotel. All right, so it seems to be your problem. Temperature's 103, BP's 160 over 110. Mm -hmm. Kidneys. Complete renal shutdown. Symptoms? Well, fatigue, fever, Shortness of breath, occasional nausea, high blood pressure. If I were you, I would do a uh, uremia workup. Uh, I'll take care of the diagnosis. Just where did you study medicine? Public library, actually. Mostly on uh, rainy days. Mm -hmm. All right, nurse, let's admit this gentleman. Order a BUN, creatinine, electrolytes, four views of the abdomen, a urinalysis, and... Uh, Urine culture. No cystoscopy. All in good time. Anyone you'd like us to call for you? No, thanks. You sure? No friends, relatives? No one. Oh, <laughs> makes life a lot simpler, really. All right, Harry. Urology ward. Uh, doctor. Mm -hmm. I was checking his personal belongings, and I found this in his pocket. Well, I'll keep it with the rest of his paperwork. We may need it later. Pharmacist, uh, Twelve patients in six hours. How often does a doctor get a chance to spread that much misinformation? <laughs> okay, but what about all that borrowed equipment? Huh? And now uh, it worked pretty well, didn't it? Now, look, that stuff was retired years ago. Let's put it back in retirement, okay? What about the clinic? But, Gonzo, we cannot afford to constantly antagonize the administration. We need Hornsby on our side. Dr. McIntyre, Dr. Gates, 223. Urology, come on. How's it going, Harry? For months, I tried to finagle my way into a hospital so I can get some sleep, and now that it's legitimate, I hate it! <laughs> we had a consultation with your urologist, Harry. You, uh, you've got a couple of very tired kidneys. They are not functioning well at all. I didn't get that far in the textbook. What does it mean? It means we have to put you on a dialysis machine. Forever? No, no. Hopefully uh, a few hours, three times a week. Connected to a machine? Oh, that's terrible. I will not give up my freedom to a bucket of bolts. It can keep you alive, Harry. There's got to be another way. There is. Kidney transplant. Of course, we'll have to find a donor, um, preferably a blood relative. Well, I don't have any relatives. What about uh, Teresa Duvall? Uh, who's she? We found this in your uh, personal belongings. Thought maybe it might be a relative of yours. <laughs> oh, her. Uh, I, I helped this woman find a taxi cab in the rain one day, and she slipped me a couple of bucks. And then uh, a few days later, I saw this uh, picture in the paper, so I just saved it. Then uh, you won't mind if we phone her? Before? Maybe she knows somebody with a spare kidney. Now, wait a minute. That, that woman wouldn't remember me. <laughs> Anybody who can find a taxi in the rain has got to be unforgettable. See you later. You going to call her? Right now. Good, because if you don't, I will. <laughs> O'Malley, uh, how's that nephrectomy in 610? Oh, it's very lively, sir. She bit me on the neck today. 
Ah, Hickey's from Sickey's. <clears throat> Looking for you, Trapper. Uh, could I have a word with you? Inhalation therapist, please call the emergency room. Inhalation therapist, call the emergency room. The uh, evening newspaper, look at it. That photo of Gonzo Gates and the Titanic, his own personal free clinic on wheels. Nice picture. Read the story. Snide little essay on how this hospital sacrificed the community center to Bobby Joe Brady's ego. Well. And Gonzo Gates has the audacity to call the new medical tower Brady's Folly. Mm, $25 million worth of self-indulgence. <laughs> Do you realize what that could do to our relationship with Brady? We can't afford to insult people with $25 million. Willard, Dr. Gates has the constitutional right of saying anything he damn well pleases. Let me put it another way. This hospital can afford to lose Dr. Gates a lot sooner than Bobby Joe Brady. Uh-huh. Well, I would love to see the Chicken Burger King perform a triple bypass. <laughs> Dr. Gates, I'm afraid you're mistaken. There's no Harry Duval in my family. For a moment, Mr. Duval, we thought he might even be your father. My father died 20 years ago. Is there any way that we can persuade you to stop by and meet this man, just for a few minutes? I, I really see no point in this. Um, I'm sorry, Dr. Gates, you have the wrong party. No luck? She's lying. How do you know? I don't know how I know, I just know. Oh, well, maybe we should just stay out of it, huh? He's my patient, Trapper. He needs a kidney. Yeah, but every time you go off on some crusade, I always have to clean up after the horses. All right, if you were in my position, what would you do? Same thing you're going to do. <laughs> Dialysis. I hate it. The ultimate humiliation. Man. Made into an extension of a machine. Oh, relax, Harry. That machine is keeping you alive. Correction. I'm keeping that machine alive. Without people like me, that machine would have no cause for being. <laughs> Come to think of it, neither would I. Yeah. Well, if we're not disturbing you, Doctor. How are you feeling, Harry? Terrible, thank you. Oh, don't pay any attention to him. Anybody that complains that much has got to be healthy. <laughs> to your daughter last night. I didn't know I had one. Teresa. Oh, please. Let's not start up with that nonsense again, huh? I stopped by the newspaper morgue on my way over. On a hunch, I looked up uh, Harry Duvall. He was one of our city's leading attorneys. About 20 years ago, Got caught in a corporate scandal. Did a little time. Then he abandoned his family and he just sort of uh, drifted away. And we did have a daughter named Teresa. Regular little private eye, aren't you? She was sorry to hear that you were ill. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet. Want to talk to her? About what? I don't know. What does a father say after he's been dead for 20 years? You really have no concept of human nature, do you, Doctor? If a man, any man, who loved his daughter would keep in touch with her somehow, a letter now and then, a few simple postcards just to tell her how he was making out, What have you told her, Harry? I don't have a daughter, Doctor. But if I did have, 
I would make absolutely certain that she was not told her father was a homeless derelict. You wouldn't lie to her, would you? Given that bizarre situation, of course I would. Oh, sure. Tell her I was a international tycoon wallowing in affluence. Jet airplanes, contracts all over the world. The confidant of presidents and kings. That woman, that uh, Teresa, what's her name, has been very successful. If she were my daughter, I would be very proud of her. I'd want her to be proud of me, too. Is that why you don't want to see her, Harry? Because you're not wallowing in affluence? Teresa made it on her own without any help from her father. She cert certainly doesn't need any... any stranger like me to complicate her life now. Okay. No strangers allowed. My... My Miss Postmate. Molly, give me that. No, I hate it. I hate it, Wally. Not one original idea in our entire line. No zap. No zing. Look at that. You call that zap? I call that yuck. Wally, if we don't get something vital and shocking in our line this season, we Sir? might just as well... Sir? Hi. I'm sorry, Mr. Vole. He just barged right in and refused to give his name or anything. Out. Out this instant. This is a private office. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Perfect. You see that, Wally? That is clever. Slightly outrageous, provocative, and just the right touch of audacity. Yes, it is audacious, isn't it? I just love that look. Well, what do you call it? This? Uh, grungy chic. Grungy chic, oh, that is fabulous. Now, you see, Wally, that is the zap we need. Oh, thank you, darling. You have just guaranteed us a yuckless season, and I love you for it. Who are you, anyway? G. Alonzo Gates, M.D. Gates? San Francisco Memorial Hospital. We uh, talked last night. All right, all of you, out. Okay, girls. Out now. now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, grungy, chic, a scrumptious idea, Terry. I'll get right to work on it. What do you want, Doctor? I, uh, I just came by to tell you that my patient is your father. And he's a bore, going on and on about his brilliant, successful daughter. A little late in the day for that, isn't it? It's never too late. They teach you that in medical school? Philosophy 1A? In Philosophy 1A, you learn, one, the patient is his own worst enemy, and two, wait till you meet the relatives. Espresso? No, thanks. 20 years. In 20 years, I never even received a letter from him until I was brilliant and successful. And now that he needs a kidney, he sends his own personal emissary. Well, it was my idea to come here, not his. Without that kidney, he may die. Let him get his kidney from someone else. Well, we're working on that, in case yours isn't compatible. You're assuming an awful lot, aren't you? I'm assuming that you may be able to save your father's life. Why should I? He never gave a damn about my life. Where was he all those years when I needed him? I'm sorry, um... Maybe you'd better go, Dr. Gates. Um, this is uh, turning into some kind of cut-rate therapy session, and I, um... Uh, I really... Look, look, would you please just go? Is there anything you'd like me to tell your father? Tell him to get lost.
think? Will she come to see you? Well, she's a very proud lady. Kind of angry, too. I think she'll be here. You tell Harry? Not yet. Check. It's going to be pretty heavy. You better prepare him. Preparations begin tomorrow morning. Who's in the presidential suite, Trevor? Bobby Joe's mother, Clarissa May Brady. Why? Just thinking. When you start thinking, I start worrying. May I ask what I have done to deserve all this attention? Well, for one thing, you've let your cuticles grow. Other hand, please. Sit up, Mr. Duval. What for? Well, among other things, you need a shave. Oh, no, no. Let's hold everything. What is this all about? Your daughter called a while ago. She's on her way over to see you. My what? I'll try to avoid any ingrown hair. You don't understand. I have no daughter. Uh, be careful. You're going to spill this goop. Look, you can't do this to me. You're making a big mistake. Now, look, she thinks you're her father. Why don't you be a nice guy and play along with you're it, You're not huh? going to get away with that at all. It's ridiculous. Relax, Harry. You're going to look like you're wallowing in affluence. I brought a few things for the occasion. Here, let's see if this jacket fits. Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful what? jacket. Where'd you get it? From another successful tycoon. Here you go. Arm in there. Uh-oh, uh sleeve's too long. Yeah, about two inches. Starch, give me a surgical needle and some sutures, please. Trio silk coming up. Oh, uh, bring in a wheelchair. We're moving to the presidential suite. Well, what about Mrs. Brady? Uh, she's been delayed in radiology. Oh, this is crazy. You can't do this to me. Look, Harry, this poor girl is coming to see the father she hasn't seen in 20 long years. I tell you, I am not her father. But she doesn't know that. She has this lovely fantasy that her father is an international entrepreneur, the confidant of presidents and kings. Now, do you really want to be the one to shatter those precious illusions? Well, do you? Yeah, well, we need the reports as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Do you have a patient okay. here named Harry sure. Duval? Oh, are you a relative? His daughter. Oh, well, yes. Mr. Duvall is in the presidential suite. Would you follow me, please? Hold on there, McIntyre. Hello. Come in, Mr. Brady. Did you see this story? Brady's message to the poor, let him eat chicken. <laughs> Did you really say that? Why would I say a dumb thing like that? Poor people are my favorites. After all, they made me a rich man. And in return, you took away their free clinic. Uh, Bobby Joe, you know, that could cause you a lot of trouble in the chicken burger business. Yeah, thanks to that snake-livered Gates fella. He's the one that got this whole stampede started. Well, there's only one way to stop it. Reopen the clinic. I want to talk to my mom about that, too. Come along. I reckon she'll have a few words to say to you, too. The doctor should be finished with his examination any minute now. He tries to be very thorough and... Uh, Mr. Ball, your father will see you now. Thank you. Yes, well, we were to have met in the Canary Islands and gone over the entire contract. But I'm afraid I can't do that just at the moment, so I am sending my attorneys. Y yes. No, no, no. We'll go over all those details in the morning. Thank you. certainly look uh, well you're much more beautiful than I expected you to be thank you oh. won't you sit down I'm sorry you're ill oh 
Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> all that time fighting back from the prison years. And then I have it all. Wealth, influence, position. And then suddenly, it's all meaningless. But you, you've been doing extremely well with your career, haven't you? I must have inherited some talent. Well, there is a price one must pay. I mean, you're always on the go, no home life, no family, no... Terry, have you a family, a husband and children? Every time I got close, the old fear came back. What if he runs out on me like my father did? Yes, I guess I... I guess I deserve that. For what it's worth, Terry, I did return home after my release from prison. But your mother wouldn't have me. I had shamed her. I had humiliated her. She didn't want me contaminating her life anymore. Or yours. Why didn't you tell me? I had already damaged my family. I, I didn't want to take any more chances. All those years? I find that hard to believe. I can understand you're not believing it. But it's true, Terry. As God is my witness, it's true. And in spite of everything, I, uh, I tried to keep in touch. I followed every step of your career. I've got a scrapbook of you. That thick. You know, I uh, spent a lot of time hating you. Proved to myself that I didn't need you. I didn't need anyone. Well, you've proved that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And now I, I have to tell you that I... I resent this whole situation. I had my feelings neatly classified. I knew exactly how I felt about everything. And now they're getting all mixed up. It's all right if you want to go on hating me. I, I think I understand. No, I, I don't think you could. I don't understand it myself. here anyway. Oh, Mr. Uh, no, she's not in, sir. She's been taken down to radiology, uh, routine x-rays. We'll wait inside. Oh, no, why don't you join her in radiology, Mr. Brady? She would probably love that. Why in Tucket? I want to do that. Uh, Dr. Gates, where does a lady go to donate a kidney? <laughs> That's beautiful. What's she doing in there? Uh, Mr. Duvall, this is Dr. John McIntyre. He's our chief of surgery. Uh, he would be glad to make all the arrangements for you, wouldn't you, doctor? Well, yes, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm delighted that you've decided to do this, Mr. Duvall. Of course, we'll have to uh, run some tests to see if you're a suitable donor, but... Uh... Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, what are we doing in that room? Visiting my father. Father? Uh, this way, Mr. Duvall. Uh, Mr. Brady, I don't suppose you'd care to join me for a cup of... Uh... Oh, Dr. Gates, I don't know how to thank you enough. What's this man doing in my mama's room? Uh, Mr. Brady, this is Mr. Duvall. Who? Harry Duvall, the uh, internationally renowned industrial tycoon and philanthropist. I don't know what you're doing here. Well, I... Uh, Mr. Duvall is a patient here. He wanted to check out our finest, most elegant accommodations. Uh, what do you think of it, sir? Uh, oh, tacky. Yeah. 
I definitely get the impression that I am slumming. You saying uh, Clarissa May Brady uh, sweet ain't good enough for you? Oh, you're that, Mr. Brady. Well, no wonder. What do you mean, no wonder? You're the fellow that's putting up that $15 million tower, aren't you? $25 million pard. You do better? Well, nothing's been finalized yet, of course, but uh, Mr. Duvall is planning to reopen our free clinic in a nice new building of his own with a large contribution. Twenty-seven million five. You got uh, Italian marble in that building? No, just uh, good medical care, free of charge. I'm a businessman, Mr. Brady, and I think it's better business to help people than to impress them. Well, Doctor, I think I'd better get back to my suite. I'm feeling a little weary. Of course, Mr. Brady. Ah. What uh, kind of business are you in? Fast foods. Chicken on the stick. Hey, Trapper, you should have seen old Harry the Hinge doing a number on Brady. Hi. Oh, hi. Um, Dr. McIntyre went to get my test results. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you, Dr. Gates. My father's masquerade was very convincing. I almost believed him. You knew. But you went along with it. I couldn't hurt him anymore. He used to write me on stationery from the St. Francis Hotel. I, I went there to see him. He wasn't registered. But the bell captains knew him. Harry the Hinge, city's champion scavenger. He hailed a taxi for me once, in the rain. He didn't even know I recognized him. Do I qualify? I didn't want her kidney anyway. I don't know what made me think it was going to work. I'm sorry, Daddy. I wish there was something I could do. Just having you here is the best thing for me. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll just keep the computers going until we find a compatible kidney, and then we'll do the transplant. And until then? Dialysis. I think you can handle it. My friend, I can handle anything. When's the last time you slept under the Golden Gate Bridge? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, am I crazy? You saw this the other day. It, it, it fit perfectly. <sighs> uh, just like that, he canceled his plans to build the new Brady Tower. How come? Well, Mr. Brady has decided to uh, remodel, refurbish, and reopen the free clinic instead. <laughs> Can you do it? He's done it. A donation of $28 million. Ooh, beautiful. Ought to keep it going a long time. <laughs> Have a chicken burger? Oh, yeah. Lock high on, y'all. Things really made out of chicken or... Are you...